uh, hearing about from that article. Can you shed a little insight on that? Well, in the dental profession, we norm, we're in very close contact to the patient, especially in mouth and nose, the head. So we already take most of the precautions. But when patients come to the dental office, the front desk need to ask about the patient if they travel, are they sick, are they ill, are they coughing, and their appointment should be rearranged to a later date, mainly 14 to 30 days later. So in order to cut down the risk, we already wear masks, gloves, shields, protect, uh, protective uh, gowns. But for the patients, if the patients are feeling ill, they should stay at home and reschedule their appointment. Remember, in dentistry, it's more or less, a lot of things can be deferred. In a medical profession, it's different because you will, if the person is ill, you could automatically see them. Unless it's an emergency in a dentistry, like a toothache, and you're in pain, we'll see you right away. But some procedures can be are elective and can be put off to a later date. Okay. And and Dr. Albright, in, in terms of this coronavirus, and I've heard several folks on the various networks comparing the coronavirus to the flu and saying, you know, every year we have, you know, the Mike Blow flu, the Thin Bad flu, flu and every year we have a certain amount of people that unfortunately pass away as a result of the this flu this strand of flu this is no different than what we've experienced throughout the years uh, a couple of people went back to the whole Ebola situation um what what are your thoughts on that well those people are generally uninformed um it is similar in that it is another virus. However, as the article stated, humans, and the reason why this virus has been so devastating is it's a different virus and it's from a snake. And he said that humans have not been exposed to this virus. So generally when you get the flu, you, your body builds up antibodies to the flu or to flu viruses. This is a virus that has not been in the human genome before that's why it's so devastating and it affects the lungs which means it gives you a serious respiratory infection and if it's not symptomatically controlled because there's no medicine for it that's why it's been so devastating well i think thin bad is going to pick it up because i i can see the look on his face and he's got questions i know that are just bursting no, sir. No, I, I, this is just, um, it, you're, you're right. There are folks who are, um, you know, concerned or some folks uh, to your point that, that you, you know, that they've not seen anything like this. So all they have to compare it to is what they've always, you know, sure. dealt with. You have people who don't want to, you know, who have fear of the flu shots. You have people who don't, and, and, and in this particular case, uh, it sounds as if, you know, the flu shot, may not you know help in this particular uh with this particular instance now there there have been some people who have uh, uh heard talking about that coronavirus itself cor- has been around or is this just a different strain of it or is this something completely brand new this well the coronavirus is like i said well the the virus itself was discovered in the 1970s gotcha okay. but it has not affected humans gotcha and he, gotcha. he said that the reason why this is like so much more devastating than the flu is because when your body hasn't had time to build up antibodies to the virus then there's no protection and that's why it's killing so many people so it's again so important to try to prevent yourself from getting the virus in the first place and if we take precautions and do that then i think we'll do it'll do much more than any other form of treatment right now as it's as it's coming across and i'm sorry i i had come in later so i'm I'm glad you you'd made that point before but um as it affects you know now folks are you know i'm working in in higher education and you have you know uh people who are uh, you have overseas, you know, study abroad programs and things like that. 
Um, is, is it, would it be safer to say that I'm wondering how long it's going to take before people really start to, to take heed of that? Are they going to, you know, do they curtail the travel altogether? Do people, do they just kind of focus on the particular areas, but it's almost, it seems like each day from here on out now we're watching it kind of creep into uh, another state uh, in the United States. Uh, I think yesterday they talked about Atlanta and now they talk about North Carolina where I'm based and you, I'm going through the stores and you, you can't find in some places you can't find any kind of hand sanitizer uh, on the shelves. I mean, I'm wondering how long before is it, is it panic state or is it a state where we just need to kind of, as you're stating, you know, protecting yourselves because it seems like there are ways if people are vigilant about uh, wiping things down, using hand sanitizer. Um, uh, but you know, the, you're right. I, I thought about it today when I went to get some gas, I said, Oh, I better, I better wipe down, you know, after I come yep. from, from the gas station, you know, because before you know it, you've touched your face. And as you said, that's, that's kind of how this thing is spreading at this point. Um, but yep. I, I'm wondering, yep. my concern about travel is, is, you know, what's your advice with regard to travel, period, not just overseas, but just kind of of in planes and things like that? Well, like I said, the, the, the danger is you have to, at least you have to transfer the virus into your body. So you're not going to get it if you're just breathing the air. And that's something people think that the mask, and that's an interesting thing. People think that the mask or so that you can't breathe it in. The mask is for you not to put it in your own mouth. It's to protect yourself from yourself. And mm-hmm. I tell you, you're talking about the panic. The hospitals now, the people have bought so many gloves and so many masks that the hospitals are now being rationed by the companies on how many masks and gloves they can get. Wow. So you know what's happening on the, Mike was just talking about, he was in line for, You know, the line was going out of the store into the parking lot. So there is a lot of concern. I wouldn't call it panic right now, but it is a mild sense of panic that uh, people are trying to stock up. But the the important thing is I'm not sure they realize what they should be panicking about. And that is to keep from giving the virus to yourself. Keep your hands out of your face. Keep your hands out of your mouth. Make sure you sanitize your hands and best you can because you must pick up the virus from a surface and transfer it into your body and if you don't do that you won't get the virus and I don't think that's being uh, put out there strong enough Mm -hmm. people are just panicking they think and they put masks on kids my son teaches school in Singapore which is right next to China and Mm -hmm. he said that they're telling them that the parents they tell the parents it's not important. Don't put masks on your children because it won't help. Parents are doing it anyway. And he's saying he goes out in the parking lot and what did, I'm on the playground. And what do the kids do? They take the mask off and put it on the ground. Oh, wow. And then they run and play. And then when they finish, they pick it up off the ground and put it back on their face. Wow. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and that's what, you know, because they're kids. Yeah. And so the parents are doing them a disservice by trying to protect them, but they're not given, you know, the message about them putting their hands on something dirty and then putting it on their face, they're doing the exact opposite as they're intending to do. So that's why I'm stressing the people that, you know, keep watch your hand. You, the only way you're going to get it, and if somebody coughs down your throat or you put your hands on a <laughs> surface that has the virus and then puts it in your, your nose or mouth. So wow. if you prevent doing those things, you'll be much safer. Wow. And just want to remind. But in terms of travel, mm-hmm. in terms of travel, the mm-hmm. president of your United States has <laughs> taken credit for the slow dissemination of this disease oh, because God. back in, you know, in the early, in the beginning of the year or last year, mm-hmm. he banned people tra- you know, flying to this country. But you can see what's happened on the cruise ships. Yeah. You know, they're quarantining people. So mm-hmm. travel, I would say at this point should be a well thought out decision that you sure. and your family make 
whether it's worth traveling to an area like if you go into Asia or something, or now, like you said, it's spreading all over. Like now it's Europe, it's Asia, Southeast Asia, right. you know? So I, I would say that, you know, if you have to go to those places, just make sure, and you don't know what kind of products they're going to have. Make sure you have your sanitizers with you, your wipes and stuff like that. So you can best protect yourself. Well, I'm glad you said that. And, you know, Dr. Audrey, one of the the things that um, you're seeing to have happen now is that same discussion about um, should I go to this place and should I go to that place? At what point should we consider, Okay, I'm not going to go to Gold's Gym. I'm not going to go to my fraternity dance or the Jack and Jill thing or or the Walmart even. Are we at that point or 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 should people start thinking about some of the places that I should avoid until they get a handle on this thing? Well, I would avoid pub- a lot of public places with a large gathering of individuals. Look at the gym. How do they clean the gym? The gym's not right. Gyms and certain areas, places like that aren't regulated by the government. We don't, they aren't graded like a restaurant. We can go and you get a grade A passable. Think about all the surfaces, sweat, all the sweat, blood, skin, people coughing, exercising, exertion. Mm. Just think of what's happening when you go to a gym, a uh, certain public places. Well, you know, that's a great point. And as you were saying that, I was thinking about some of those MMA fights, Uh, depending on where you sit in the arena, you can actually feel sweat and other body fluids, you know, flying throughout the air and getting on the audience and so forth. So, you, you know, you raise a great point. People, would you recommend people consider not attending these events or at least watching them on TV until they get this under control? I will watch it on television. Also, you need to think (laughs) about the engineering aspect. How is the air circulating in these buildings? What, what, how is the air and air circulating in airplanes? How is the air clean? How do they do it? And people need to take all that into uh, consideration when they're in such a closed contact, uh, uh, closed in area. What is the ventilation like? As I can tell, when I work, when the ventilation, when there's no air circulating in the office, I begin to cough. I can tell personally just being in certain buildings where there's no air and there's no airflow. So people need to take all that into consideration. What's at work? What's going to happen at work? Schools? Mm. How is the air? How, you know, how is the air? How are the buildings maintained? There are a lot of things to take into consideration when you have a virus that is uh, passed by droplets, touch, how they sanitize. Every you see on television, they're spraying all these areas, sanitized. You can't disinfect it, but they're doing the best they can. But you have a lot of areas in, in public areas that are being sanitized. So basically, you need to like good hand washing, but also you need to stay healthy. You need to eat a healthy diet and keep yourself healthy. Because remember, a lot of the cases, a lot of the individuals have pre-existing conditions. People with heart disease, uh, respiratory disease, they have pre-existing conditions. So they're going to be more susceptible susceptible to the virus. Right. That's a question when you talk about uh, where people either quarantine or they, they curtail their travel or uh, their their appearances in, in in public. When you say until you get a handle on it, if there's if there's no vaccination for this thing, there's nothing that that's going to come up this year. How how do you get a handle on something uh, when there's no vaccine for it as of yet, other than just people? I mean, is it when the weather changes? Is something going to be different, or, or how? What's going to make what makes it when you say get a handle, how does how do they get a handle on it without having any kind of medication that's going to be ready for a year? Mm-hmm. I can take a step of that. And that is like we said, you gotta prevent from giving the virus to ingest the virus yourself. 